Hello, welcome to my chemistry education channel. Kindly subscribe and hit the notification button so that you can be notified once we upload a new video. Hi, I'm teacher Thaddeus Baluka, currently teaching at Alliance High School. I am a distilled chemistry technocrat with a wealth of experience in teaching and examining chemistry for the last 15 years. In our today's uh, topic, I'll be able to navigate via the chemistry exam. So the title of our video today is Preparation for the KCSE Chemistry Exam. Welcome. So uh, today's topic, as I've said, is preparation for the chemistry exam. It's a journey through the mind of an examiner. So work with me as I try to navigate via through the chemistry exam. The main focus, as you wait for an exam, you focus on three major areas. What is tested, how it is tested, and what is expected. So as I say that I'm a passionate chemistry teacher and I have written several books, the top-notch workbooks, this one they contain distilled and refined chemistry notes with suggested questions that can feature in an exam and smart notes that you can be able to refer to. So uh, grab a copy of the top notch books and be able to get refined notes that are going to make your revision a little bit easy. We'll start by looking at the preparation for the KCSE exam. The exam is usually set from the four main branches of chemistry. The first branch, the first branch is, the first branch is organic. And organic, we only have two topics there whereby we have organic M1 and organic M2. That just one topic, which is simply one topic subdivided into two, you expect to get 30 marks, imagine 30 marks from one topic. Paper one, paper two will, you are likely going to get 20 marks from per theory and question three, paper three will be set from organic. The organic qualitative analysis is usually the question three, which attracts around 10 marks. Then we have the analytical chemistry. The analytical chemistry, we only have the classification of substances in form one, acid, bases, and salts. This one, the mark range in a normal chemistry exam, that is paper one, paper two, paper three, you're going to get between 30 to 50 marks. We have a sure bet here. Question two for paper three, that is test for cations and anions, is set from this particular area. The analytical came that is whereby we are going to set the question two of paper three. Then we have the inorganic chemistry. In organic chemistry, we have the chemistry of metals and nonmetals. Most of the topics of chemistry fall under this, fall under this particular branch. This is whereby you're going to have the chemistry of metals, the chemistry of chlorine, nitrogen, sulfur. We are always going to get that all the Carbon is also here. The periodic table is also under inorganic chemistry. This topic carries between 50 to 80 marks. So it's a very important topic. You need to make sure that you revise very well. Then we have the physical chemistry. Physical chemistry, this is whereby we have the rate of radioactivity, electrochemistry, energy, the mole 
and solubility. So all these ones fall under physical chemistry. Again, this one is between 50 to 80 marks. This is where you're going to have question one of paper three is usually set from the physical chemistry and attract 20 marks. So for paper three, the first 20 marks question one will come from physical chemistry. The second question around 10 to 14 marks will come from analytical and question three will be set from organic qualitative analysis. So it's very much important to note that especially these topics, the rate, radioactivity, electrochemistry, energy changes, and solubility are usually topics in form four. And you're going to find that usually there are two questions, at least two questions from inorganic and two questions from physical for paper two. That tells you about 50 out of 80 marks in paper two are usually set from inorganic and physical chemistry with organic featuring only one question and maybe analytical another one question so you need to focus on those particular areas then from there we want to look at which are the major topics so like now you can be able to see organic alone is a branch on its own and that is why you'll never miss a question from organic chemistry in kcsc paper two even paper three even paper one because all branches, when the examiners are setting an exam, must be captured. Very important. So I want now to show you the analysis for paper three, the practical analysis. The chemistry paper three is usually set from these particular topics. So we are going to have titration. For the last 25 years, 1995 to 2019, Titration has been set 20 times out of 25. And it has two system acts. Energy changes have been set 14 times, contributing 173 marks. Solubility has been only been set two times, contributing 19 marks. Rate has been set five times, contributing 78 marks. Qualitative analysis out of 25 times has been set for 24 times. Very important. Qualitative, organic qualitative has been set 21 times, contributing 166. Then we have the cooling curve, which will land in form one, which has been set only once and only eight marks. Very important for you to be able to capture that, that you can now be able to see the major areas are titration, we also have energy changes, we also have the, the two qualitative analysis. The two qualitative analysis. These ones are key areas. These ones are key areas. The qualitative, organic, inorganic. So that is where the exam has been set from. Because why are we getting so many questions from titration? Because there are so many ways in which a question can be set on titration. So it's very much important as you prepare, you measure that. Remember the exam for, for paper three will only be set from this around the uh, seven areas, but there are simply six areas. And remember, there are only six areas. But I've said, of course, this is whereby you get question, the, the qualitative or not in organic, this is whereby you get question two. Question two is set from there. And organic, this is where we normally get question, question three. Question three is from there. And all these ones, titration, energy, changes, solubility rate, and cooling curve, these are by likely going to gain, we are going to get these ones now. We normally going to get question one. Question one is usually going to be set from this particular area. So now you know where the exam will come from. Organic qualitative analysis, question three of 10 marks. Inorganic qualitative test for cations and anions, question two, around between 10 to 14 marks. Then the physical chemistry, which is titration, energy changes, solubility, rate, and cooling curve, contributing the question one, which is around 20 marks. 
So I want to show you the summary of how the exam has been set for the last 25 years. This is from 19, this is from 1995 to 2019. This is 25 years. This analysis now, for form now. Summary of analysis for form. For the last 25 years, form one, the total mark that has been set from form one are 319 marks. For form two, 643. For form three, 10, 1,016 marks. And for form four, 2,096. That is theory alone. When now we combine the theory and practical, we have already said form one, there, there was only one question from cooling curve, which was eight marks. So when you had it, you get the total marks for the last 25 years that have been set from form one is 327. Form two, there is no practical for form two, so 643. Form three, 1,251, because those two sixty marks from that. Then we have the form four, contributing around 2,828. So those are so many marks that have been got from that particular end. So now you can be able to see from this analysis, form four is the major area that is tested. Form four is the major area that is tested in, 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 a, in a very big area, rather a very major area in your revision. Because as I said, from four is whereby we are having the organic qualitative, the deep organic qualitative is in form four. The real qualitative test for cations, the use of amboteric oxide is also done in form four. So there is a lot that has to be done and you have to take the form four work very serious. Number two, all the physical chemistry topics, the rates, radioactivity, electrochemistry, energy changes, radioactivity are all in form four. And those particular topics, you find that now, you always get a question, at least two or three questions in paper two. That's around 40 marks. And then there's a question in practical, at least two of them. Let's look at now those analysis. How do you arrive at that? These are now the breakdown per topic. Breakdown per topic. And you can be able to see Introduction to chemistry, for the last 25 years, we have only been able to get eight marks from that particular topic. And somebody might ask you why. The only question you're going to find from uh, the introduction to chemistry is normally the issues of banners. So you don't need to spend sleepless nights learning about the 28 laboratory rules, the lab apparatus. We rarely bring a question on the use of apparatus because of one scenario. That skill is always tested whereby we tell students, complete the setup to show how you can collect hydrogen gas. Draw a setup that can be used to determine the, the percentage of oxygen used in rusting. So in the process of whereby a question requires you to draw a diagram, the skill on the use of apparatus is always tested there. That is why you're going to find there are very few questions on use of apparatus because the same skill is always tested in terms of complete the diagram, draw a setup. So simple classification of substances you see is giving you 85 marks. And combustion 65 and water and hydrogen 68. So you can see the total marks for form one are 294. From there I can give you an advice. In Form 1, revise the following three topics. Classification, air and combustion, water and hydrogen. Simple. Introduction, make sure that you are very conversant with bus and banner and flames. Simple. Let's look at Form 2. Form 2, the major topic there is only periodic table. So normally question of periodic table, we simply synchronize four topics in one. Structure of the atom, chemical families, structure and bonding, and it trails across the period. You can see all these topics combined. Structure 969, chemical families 143, structure and boarding 166, trails 13. 
to a total marks are 391. This is one topic, and it has more marks than all the what? Than the Form 1 alone. Just one topic. Periodic table, giving you more marks than Form 1. That tells you, you need to emphasize on this particular topic. This topic is very major as you prepare for your exam. You need to make sure that you have really understood this particular topic. Let's look at the Form 3. You are looking at the Form 3 there. We having the, this is Form 3 work now. Form 3 work. We are having the gas law 58. Mole, everything to do with the calculation, mole is giving you 299. Calculation alone, that's the mole. Carbon and its compounds, nitrogen, sulfur, you can be able to see. This falls under industrial chemistry and they're giving you about 1,000 marks. That is industrial chemistry. Very important. Again, you rarely miss a question from this particular area. This is whereby you're going to form the gases. Very important to capture that. Then the other area is there. Eh, now the form four, and you can see the form four there. This is the form four topics. So with the form four, we have metals two hundred and eighty one. Acid bases are together. These are from one topic, but it's very small. Uh, salt. These are the analytical chemistry. I've grouped them together. That's why I brought the acid bases, salt. Are uh, we also have these? So these are analytical chem and giving you four hundred and sixty six. Then we have the other branch, which is the physical chemistry, which are the energy changes, reaction rate, uh, electrochemistry, effect of electric current, electrochemistry, radioactivity. This is giving you about 847. But remember, you're also adding mole, because mole is still under physical chemistry, and we are getting 1,046. So when you look at that, you're seeing that the physical chem is contributing a lot of marks. So from this analysis, which I've done for the last, for the last uh, 25 years, now from there, you can be able to come up with the, the major topics. And from there, we can be able to have a look at that. So the titration, we had already done the, the practical analysis. We have already analyzed this. So we had also done that. So we look at now. Oh, we had done this. So we look at topics called the delimitators. You can see the D and E is written in capital letters. So delimitators here, the delimitators, the delimitators here, you can see I've written in caps. The D and E, it means the D and E eliminator topics. These are the D and E eliminator topics. So when you focus on this particular topic, you eliminate the D grade D and the grade E. So these ones now, they can even eliminate the C. So in any student, even the poorest student, you can easily be able to get a mean grade of a C in chemistry. So the first one is periodic table. This topic alone in any KCSC contributes around 25 marks in KCSC. It's a major area. Paper one, you're going to find like 10 marks. Paper two, you're going to get 14 marks there. Sort and sort analysis. 30 to 50 marks, just one topic, because question two will require you to understand the concept of salt and salt analysis. Industrial chem, this is about we having the chemistry of carbon, the chemistry of sulfur, the chemistry of nitrogen, and the chemistry of chlorine. This is about we have the industrial chemistry and maybe metal there. So this one and gases, because it's about you're going to prepare the gas like carbon oxide, carbon trioxide, sulfur oxide. This one will attract about 40 marks. Then we have, we also have another topic that is very important, the physical chem. And the topics there are rate, radioactivity, electrochem, energy changes. That topics alone, the few they are, they may end up giving you about 50 marks, 50 to 80 marks, because you're going to get like three questions from this particular area. So very important to focus. Then we have organic chem, which is going to give you about 30 marks. So when you focus on this particular topic, you may find yourself getting more than 120 marks, and that will be around 60. So focus on this particular topic. These are the, strong, the strongholds of chemistry. 
Then we have the pillars of chemistry. I call them the commandments of chemistry. The commandment, the commandments of chemistry, we have the reactivity series. The understanding of the reactivity series is what enables you to understand like electrochemistry. Preparation of gases, why we don't prepare hydrogen using copper. So this is one of the pillar, or rather the stronghold, rather the commandment of chemistry. You also need to know the first 20 elements, writing and balanced chemical equations, industrial chemistry and gases, the, the issues of uh, nitrogen, sulfur, chlorine, solubility of salts, the mole concept. This one could be more than 30 marks. Then we have organic chemistry, which carries 30 marks. So these are what we call the seven commandments of chemistry. And for those who don't follow those commandments, will never enter the kingdom of chemistry. It's important to be able to capture that. Very, very important. And then again, as I said, make sure that the other area is practical. And if you want to pass practicals, make sure that you are able to buy this book. This one has analysis of all the practicals from 1997. And practicals are the same. That question three is always organic qualitative analysis. Question two is simply test for cations and anions. So when you get this book and you read the note there, you pass through all those cases, you are assured of getting above 30 out of 40. The same with biology, that is it. And these are workbooks whereby you can be able to write inside. Make sure that you're able to get a copy of this particular book. They are going to help you be able to pass. But practical, you can easily get that nine out of 40, that six out of 40, things like that, or even 40 out of 40. And then as we finish uh, the parting shot is that in all things, for success to be achieved, it depends on the previous preparations. And if there is no such preparations, there is sure to be failure. Thank you for watching. My number is there. My email is also there. You can be able to reach me. Please subscribe, hit the notification button, comment, tell us what you want me to deal with. In my next uh, video, I'll also be able to pick some of those uh, strongholds, those delimiters, and analyze them using a simple surgical tool called the octopus technique, whereby I'm going to be able to analyze one question using several scenarios, analyzing all the possibilities that an examiner can think of. So thank you so much. Keep watching, keep commenting, and give me the feedback on the topics that you want me to demystify, I'll continue unpacking, illuminating, and masking, and demystifying this particular topic. And remember, chemistry is the only subject globally whereby the recruiters are not able to meet the demand. It is the most highly sought subject. So create a positive attitude, focus, and continue watching as I try to demystify this particular subject.